Today is the Feast of St. Joseph. Uh, on the March 19th, there's a second one. But this is the first one in Passion Tide in this case. And so we have still the statue of St. Joseph covered up, but that won't always be the case, considering that uh, the second one is in Paschal Tide, so everything will be removed and he will be uh, fested as he uh, should be. But this time, uh, Passion Tide still has uh, somberness about it. And so uh, it remains uh, somewhat muted, the feast does. The epistle for uh, today is taken from It's taken from Ecclesiasticus, chapter 14. Beloved of God and men, whose memory is a benediction, he made him like the saints in glory and magnified him in the fear of his enemies. And with his words he made prodigies to cease. He glorified him in the sight of kings and gave him commandments in the sight of his people and showed him his glory. He sanctified him in his faith and meekness and chose him out of all flesh. For he heard him and his voice and brought him into a cloud and he gave him commandments before his face and a law of life and instruction. The gospel is taken from that of St. Matthew. When Mary, the mother of Jesus, was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Whereupon Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willingly publicly to expose her, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in his sleep, saying, Joseph, son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Thus are the words of today's Holy Gospel. You may be seated. When Mary, the mother of Jesus, was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Dear brethren, this feast of St. Joseph uh, is over a, sp a specific mystery of St. Joseph, actually. That is, St. Joseph as the spouse of Our Lady. The feast of St. Joseph and Paschal Tide is the feast of St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church. But I'd like to look at just a moment one aspect of St. Joseph, uh, which is important for the spiritual life, that is a spirit of silence. Out of the many saints in the Old and New Testament, St. Joseph doesn't speak a word, a single word attributed to St. Joseph in the scriptures. So in a certain way, he is bound to silence. He's an obscure saint. Uh, and yet God has chosen him for the highest of all uh, missions, save that of the divine motherhood exercised by Our Lady, that he was to be a shadow of the fatherhood of God regarding the divine child who was born of the Blessed Virgin. And in order to fulfill that great mission, perhaps you know, next to Our Lady, the greatest of missions, to fulfill that worthily, uh, there were several things necessary. First, we are told in Scripture that St. Joseph was just, and therefore justice is one of the conditions in order to fulfill God's will worthily. That is, we offer to God that which is his due. It's easily said, but not easily done. How many of us are able, in fact, to offer to God that which is his due, rather than our poor attempts to approximate in some degree what we owe him. But St. Joseph was just. And this justice of St. Joseph lies at the bottom of his sanctity, the base of his sanctity, the justice before God. And because he was just towards God, God in turn gave him this great mission to be the foster father of our Lord, to be the shadow of God the Father, as William Frederick Faber, Faber called him. But beyond that, we have a second uh, second characteristic of St. Joseph, and that is his silence, as I mentioned. He doesn't speak in the New Testament. 
And that should teach us something, too, the importance of silence in the spiritual life. In the Old Testament, we have the uh, idea given to us of the fact that God can only be heard in silence, not in the great wind, not in great sounds, uh, but rather in quietness is when we're able to hear the voice of God. And so St. Joseph, we see him always silent. Silence because he is the saint after Our Lady most able to hear the voice of God. Uh, and therefore, he refrains from worldly chatter, talking about things that are not important, but rather listens to God. And that has got to be our spirit uh, within the clergy, and that is to hear God, to be able to hear him. Many people are always rushing around. They have tons of stuff to do. They don't hear God. And unfortunately, uh, before the council, you had the clergy who were building lots and lots and lots of schools and churches. And people were seen to be coming in. It was wonderful uh, in the 1950s, it seemed. And then 10 years later, it was all over. And the reason it was over was because they had built their foundations upon sand upon a worldly renown, and they convince themselves that the more they do, the more they're going to be able to do, and therefore they're going to build up everything uh, for our Lord. And it didn't happen. The entire thing collapsed. Uh, and the reason I fear is because they did not have the spirit of silence, the spirit of prayer, which is necessary to build anything solid for God. Otherwise, it's just an appearance. It's a flash in the pan. It's a temporary thing, which seems to produce lots of noise and excitement, but ultimately doesn't accomplish anything. That is the main message of a book which St. Pius X recommended, which is called Soul of the Apostolate, which in that book he speaks about the prayer, the spirit of prayer, as being the necessary foundation for any work. And that was especially important in the 20th century because people began more and more to think we need to do, we need to do, we need to do, and then they forgot to pray, they forgot to be silent before God so that they could hear what God wanted of them. But rather it was all action, 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 but no contemplation and no spirit of silence. And we see the results around us. We go to the parishes, we saw all these places, we see all these places that were built up in the 1950s, and they are empty. Schools are closed, the convents are closed, or nearly so. The seminaries, many of them were closed uh, because finally this kind of spirit of naturalism in which we're going to do this, that, and the other thing for God, we think, but it's really for us, that that's going to collapse. We have got to build, rebuild Christendom in a spirit of silence, in a spirit of prayer, in a spirit of contemplation, to hear the voice of God. As St. Joseph was able to hear the voice of God, the angel came and warned him to take the child into Egypt because uh, Herod was going to kill the child. And likewise, at the end uh, of Herod's life, the angel appears to also St. Joseph in sleep and tells him, rise up and take the child and go back uh, because the man who was going to kill him is dead. God intervenes. God tells St. Joseph because St. Joseph was a man of silence, because he was a man who took time to hear the voice of God and not be rushing around and rushing around and rushing around and accomplishing nothing. So let us ask St. Joseph in this Mass for the spirit of silence. We're not Trappist, obviously, not total silence all the time, but there's got to be a kind of spirit of silence around us. So don't allow things to distract you from the main thing you're here for, to prepare for the priesthood, to prepare to be a worthy minister of God at the altar. And therefore, you need to, to prepare for that by a foundation of silence, foundation of prayer, foundation of study, uh, in order that when the time comes, you will be as prepared as you can be, anyway, for such a great office which is going to be placed upon you. So let's ask St. Joseph for his help 
for the spirit of silence and prayer, which exalted him to such a great degree before our Lord. And ask his intercession for the seminary, of course, for all of you, that he would guide you to the steps of the altar, where, with the help of God, you will be ordained priest one day in the name of the Father, Son, and 